We are currently done in construction. This is our design and construction proposal for the new science building at Highway University. Our main focus for our design and construction proposal was to emphasize the beauty of High Point's campus while maintaining the architectural tradition and focusing on minimizing costs. Connor McDonough Construction is a design build firm located in Washington, D.C. Our main goal is to join strong architecture and design uh, with practice construction processes to create an exceptional result. Our core values are client service, safety, integrity, and quality. For client service, our success is our client's success, and the client's success is our success. Um, for safety, we believe in safety above all else. We believe all accidents are preventable through proper training and um, information, through employee empowerment and engagement, and constant vigilance. We believe that we can have everybody who comes to the site leave the site in safe condition. With integrity, from how we treat our clients to how we engage with our project partners, uh, a deep commitment to fairness and ethics is at the root of what we do and paramount to our success. With quality, delivering um, our client's vision is um, delivering our client's vision uh, means understanding that the details are just as important as the big picture. This also means that we have a strong focus on stringent quality control and detailed planning. I'm Mike McDonald and I'm the project team manager. I'm Joe O'Neill and I'm the BIM specialist and virtual designer. I'm Patrick Olson and I'm the chief messenger. I'm Kyle Skinner and I'm the quality control officer. I'm Connor Rogers and I'm the safety team. I'm Henry Cook and I'm the project architect. So I'd like to start off and talk about the concept of the design, the placement on the site, and then collaborating with my BIM specialists. So for the concept of the design, I started with daylighting as a main factor, the campus as a whole, keeping to the vernacular aesthetics, and then keeping a simplistic design to have an efficient uh, design process. So for daylighting, we put windows on the north facade to accent the diffuse daylighting and then added light shells on the southern side to block the glare and then bounce light farther into the space to provide around a 3% daylighting factor in all the classrooms and offices, which really allow for the students and the teachers to perform more effectively versus just having electric lighting. Uh, our systems kind of bounce off with sunlight versus um, electric light we needed, so it's really value out the electric lights to pick up. So then our views to the pond is something else that we really considered. Um, so essentially we cut through the building with a courtyard and a breezeway so that you are view straight through from approaching from campus and then even if you just want to walk to the pond, you wouldn't have to go in the building and out the building or if you just want to study in that area, um, kind of back around back side of the building and access to the pond as well. So collaborating with my bid specialist, we could build a model that I could then iterate off of and have a, you know, a better product in the end. So with BIM, or otherwise known as Building Information Modeling, it's, it's used as a tool, um, but at the same time, it's a process. So we were able to use the BIM process and apply it to design, estimating, the build process, and resource allocation. With the design, we were able to receive in a, a completely extra dimension. So instead of just having that one 2D floor plan, we were able to put it into three dimensions and really see what the building was accurately going to look like, um, get a good visual representation for that. The, um, another software that we can use for, for BIM is Navisworks. Navisworks allows you to create the, that 3D walkthrough um, to make sure all of the parts are going to fit together without having any kind of conflicts with the MET stuff, the structural. Uh, it just it gives a good overall view. Um, and the renderings as well uh, give an accurate visual representation for the owner the designer and the contractors to make sure everybody understands what's going on and knows what they're getting that the owner knows what they're getting that what they want. And 
Another good thing about Vim or even the CAD softwares is being able to pull out quantity schedules. So with different schedules such as walls or drawers, there's several different ones in the project. This allows you to easily pull it out uh, using, using the schedule tool and you can calculate areas, cost, count, um, and the type of walls, you can kind of enjoy that. Uh, make it, it makes it a lot easier for the estimator. It makes the process a little bit go, go by a little bit quicker too. In compiling the estimates for the new science that we're building at High Point University, we utilize the 2015 RS Means Cost Assembly Data Book, as well as a UNI Format 2 template for estimating. Um, the RS Means Book not only gives rough <coughs> material costs, but also labor costs and general inflation and deflation of several locations around the area, so we're able to get a more accurate cost of the final building. Uh, our overall goal in design and building was to keep costs low due to the impending laboratory and also furnishings that needed to be added in at the end of the project by the owner. Uh, our final cost ended up being right around $13.8 million. In designing the building, one of the key aspects that we used to help eliminate costs was the use of concrete piles. Uh, due to the soft soil, we were able to do this instead of the more expensive seal piles. Uh, also, along with con continual bidding and scope refinement, we're able to keep the cost and estimate as low as possible. I have a quick question, uh, if you don't mind. What are your mechanical, electrical, and plumbing costs in that estimate? Um, it seems as though they were left out of that general estimate on the sheet. But they are, they should be in our RFP. They're in the RFP. With this project, we kept a really tight schedule. Our overall project duration is about 15 months. Uh, assuming a notice received of today, October 30th, uh, we could begin the design development phase right away. The design development phase will last about four months to late February, and then utilizing a fast track design build method, we would start construction earlier than the completion of the design development phase. So with the completion of our civil site foundational and structural work, we could start working on our site around January 11th. Um, so that's when the construction is set to begin. And then with the completion of the structural work, the concrete work, the MEP and fire protection systems, and the enclosure of the building, our building will be weather tight by August 30th of 2016. And then with the completion of the interior finishes, uh, the substantial completion date will be January 7th, January 4th, 2017. And then with final inspections and cleanup, our final project completion date will be January 27th, 2017. Communications is one of the most important factors in a successfully executed construction project. From the very beginning, we will bring on the owner, the designer, and the major subcontractors to, stay, to work together on the design of the building. The owner will ensure that what he wants is what he will get. There's going to be no confusion between his goal and his dreams and what the architect and designers come up with. While we design the building, the major subcontractors will also be talked to to ensure that there will be no conflict or issues with the work they are expected to perform. This will help to ensure that during the project there are no issues or conflicts with their work. To do all of this, we're going to use Procore software. It is a collaboration tool that allows the rapid and easy sharing of all documents that are related to construction. During the actual construction phase, any changes, addendums, or other issues can be brought to everyone's attention using the software. Any, any solutions or changes to plans will then be posted online Everyone will have access to it and there will be no conflicting uh, reports or plans that could slow us down and cost us money. If we strive to keep this work site as safe as possible. In order to do this, we have a power philosophy. Public safety, occupant safety, worker safety, and eliminating risk. Other businesses and activities can't be halted or postponed due to the construction process. Therefore, we implement 
different means such as fencing, signs, and keeping track of different activities around campus in order to ensure that instruction is not considered peace. The occupant is the group of people that will be using the structure often. So therefore, we'll implement different means such as safe building procedures and different products, as well as keeping in track all of the possible occupants that could potentially be using the structure to create the most possible means that they can be safe in our workers are our greatest asset. So therefore, throughout every meeting and every phase of construction, we have to make sure that their safety is kept in track. So through different trainings and safety meetings throughout the week, as well as keeping record of any possible safety hazards, we can ensure, ensure that they can have the safest possible experience. Lastly, the best way to keep a project safe is to eliminate any risks to begin with. So throughout the design, construction, and post-construction phases, eliminating any potential safety hazard before they even happen is the best way to keep the project safe. We at Conor Young strive to keep an injury-free environment. And over the past 10 years, we're happy to say that we have been able to keep an EMA of under the floor. So using safety coordination through pre-construction, design for safety, different safety meetings throughout the week and trainings, we can ensure that the people who leave the project leave so in the same condition they start. A proper site logistics plan is essential to the proper execution of a construction project. It helps to eliminate safety risks as well as provide environmental control for the surrounding area. Surrounding our entire project we have found to prevent any pedestrian or public individuals from coming onto the site and potentially being injured. Along the eastern side of our project, we will have erosion control to prevent the contamination or pollution of the pond, which is the central focus of the High Point campus. Our main entrance will be on the southern portion of the site and will immediately lead to our storage and our office as well as our parking. This will be away from our main construction this will help to ensure that any materials or individuals who are not essential to the physical construction will not be getting in the way of those doing the work. This will allow them to be safer as well as for them to work faster and without construction. Our main goal is to have lasting relationships with both our employees as well as our clients so that in the future we can potentially do more business. Through the use of collaborative software, we can keep the process centered on completing the goal both on schedule and on budget. Through the use of fact-based decision-making, different systematic and strategic approaches, and effective communications, we constantly strive to improve our working environment and our systems in order to ensure that the client and the workers have the best possible working experience. So to reiterate, uh, the focus of our uh, design and construction proposal was to emphasize the natural beauty of High Plains campus to maintain the school's architectural tradition and to focus on minimizing costs. Thank you for your time. Does anybody have any questions? What is your, uh, what is the total square footage of the? I think it's 67,000. 67, so, uh, How many costs per square foot on that? Uh, we were not able to calculate that. Due to Excel difficulties in transferring cells.
it's, it's more just for learning experience through it. Um, the biggest challenge that, that everybody got thrown as far as kind of curveball in, in the middle of the process yesterday was getting to see what the soil conditions were like and, and realizing that you were going to have a, have a pretty big challenge with just how you're going to structurally accomplish building the project. So there's a couple different things that were brought up within that geotechnical report, a couple ways to, to go ahead and go about building the project from that standpoint. You need to talk a little bit more about what you chose and then the reason you chose it for cost and schedule reasons. And then what your alternatives would have been if it's more money for what you did and shorter time or vice versa with, with your alternatives. Uh, so we chose to do uh, concrete piles, uh, concrete and bearing piles with a structural slab on top. Uh, we chose to do that um, mostly for the uh, schedule savings uh, because we had a 20 month maximum and 16 month maximum for construction. Uh, and we also chose concrete versus steel piles as um, a cost saving, and also because uh, the soil that we were on wasn't very rocky, um, and concrete was all the rocks for this facility, so um, we were able to do well. Um, and what was the second question? Just, just if you if you'd gone to an alternative beside your concrete and grain piles, what would you have done instead? What would have the impact been, both positive and negative, for schedule and cost? Um, I think if we hadn't done that, we probably would have done Peers, um, because well, it was there was still a settlement period that we had and settlement analysis uh, period. Uh, it would have reduced the schedule from the initial five months for the uh, settlement analysis, um, as the geotechnical board indicated. And walk us through your schedule. Yeah, is there a slide? No, yeah, but, but they had a the we had milestone. 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 That was good. Right, and then the how does that how does that over um, right so. How does that align with your, so you have the major milestone with construction, is that right? Yes. Or just in general? No, uh, it's construction. Yeah, it's construction and then design it's development. Right. So it looks like, um, are we finishing, we're, we're essentially finishing design in the middle of construction, correct? Yes. That kind of holds in the middle of early construction. Four months in. Four months in. Because yes, construction starts Three months in. mid January and design development is done by the end of February. Perfect. Yeah, four months. So your overall project schedule, what was that? The, the overall project schedule is 15 months. 15 months for construction, right? Uh, no, for construction it is um, a year. Okay, promise, wow, nice. Okay. So Hannah made a really good point about being able to, to partner with more the BGC side and the BIM side, how it was effective for her design for the contractor side, what was the benefit of partnering and, and having an architect as part of your team during this process? Well, I would say one of the things, especially with the design, uh, is we don't know very much about uh, light diffusion and all that, um, and so through her creativity, we were able to um, still find a plan, or still create a plan and uh, a design that uh, takes advantage of the natural beauty on campus. Um, also, she's had a lot of great input on the project. What was the like with the most of contract? It was definitely a learning experience. I mean, in the studio, you know, you're doing a lot of theoreticals, you know, oh, I don't really want to do concrete piles, I'm going to make up a new foundation. So you just kind of wing it and go with it. So it's interesting to know it's very practical people when you need yes, no answers, and it's not all whimsical. Do you all have uh, any classes together? Or any projects, maybe even? Do I have five of us still? Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm between architecture and, and the, is it your car building construction? Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't think the school really offers any. I mean, I can go over the books and classes. Do you think that would be beneficial? Being seeing what you've been through in a short period of time, do you think you, in, in, when you come out of college, do you think you would benefit from I think some more collaborative? Do you feel like you were exposed to some things that you otherwise would not have right. had participated in? Yeah, yeah so we're in a probably the field of the field. We currently have a class in a great construction studio, and um, I know for our past one project, we have to do the design work, and so I think having architects. 